welcome to Taking the College Route with Bongi. My name is Bongi Kile Khalakhala and today, as you guys have seen by the title, I'm here to deliver on yet another promise. Today, we are going to be talking about the practical tests that we performed at the training center when I went there to do my wireman's license assessment. Overall, there's about 16 of the tests, but I have decided to divide them into three. So to make my videos short, because I've gotten complaints from people saying that they don't have enough data to watch my videos. And two, I have noticed how draining it is for me as a person who gives the information. So I can imagine how it is for a person who's watching. So from now on, I'm going to try my absolute best to keep all my videos as short as possible. Without wasting time, let us get into the business of the day. One very important thing that I would like to outline for you guys before we start with the tests is that as an electrician who has been called to come and test and certify, that's all you get there and do. If by any chance when, when you were testing, you've come, you came across faults, you note those down. Then you don't write anything on your certificate of compliance because uh, you don't write, you just don't write anything on your certificate of compliance. You, until those faults are fixed, then you come again to test and certify. Now, because we are electricians and we can fix those faults, um, just know this one thing that if they want you to fix the faults by yourself, then they should pay you for that separately. They should pay you for fixing the faults and pay you for testing and certifying. Now, with that out of the way, let us get into the tests. The first one being the visual test. Now, there's a part, okay, okay, when you get your certificate of compliance, there's a part, the first thing that you fill in there is, is this an existing installation or is this a new installation? Now, an existing installation is, Say this person has a house, but they want to sell their house. So like anyone who sells their house or who rents their house out, uh, there needs to be renovations. There need to be things uh, fixed, things replaced, things done. So they call an electrician for the same thing as well to see if the power is still in good condition. Um, the installation basically is in good condition. So they do that. Now that's an existing installation. A new installation is obviously a new house that has just been built. Then uh, electricity has been installed and you come there to just see if everything has been done right and you certify. Now you fill that part, it's at the top of your certificate. Then the second thing is the visual test. The visual test is, there's a part where you are required to note down how many lights are there, how many socket outlets are there, how many, um, if you have an alarm and other things. But because here on this particular video, we are talking about a basic household or a basic installation, we are not going to include alarms and all of that. So you can just write NA, NA, NA on all the parts where there are things that are not part of the installation that you are there to test. So how many lights, how many socket outlets? One very important thing that you need to test on the socket outlets or need to check is if the shutters are working. Now, what are shutters? Shutters are, you see those three holes for the plug on a socket outlet? You have one big one at the top, then the two small ones at the bottom. So you take a screwdriver and you put it on the one big one what should happen is the shutters, which are the things that are closing the small holes, the small um, uh, two other holes at the bottom, should open. If those uh, the things there, which are called the shutters, do not open, then that means the shutters are not working and that socket outlet needs to be replaced. You note that down, of course, like I've already mentioned. Then you check the distribution box, see if it's in good condition, see if it has a cover, see if it has a danger sign on it, see if each and every, uh, they have the right circuit breakers for each circuit, see if it has the right number of circuits on each circuit breaker. Circuits are the wires that are going to your lights and your circuit outlets, basically. So you are not supposed to have more than three in one circuit breaker. So you can have two wires or one wire, but you cannot have more than three. If you have more than three, not that down. 
then uh what else do you check for how many distribution boxes are there um that is everything you know done on the certificate then your next test is going to be uh continuity of bonding yes it's continuity of bonding i have my list here it's continuity of bonding now continuity of bonding like i mentioned on my previous video now you know what bonding is now that you know what bonding is let's talk about the test that you do uh, like i said on that video it's all metal parts connected together so you just check to ensure that all the metal parts around that particular household are connected together you use your digital multimeter you put it on the ohm scale and now another very important thing about all these tests is that you must know what reading to expect you can't just test and if you get a reading then you think that's it no that's not how it works the reading to expect on this particular one is anything less than 0, 0,2 ohms now here's another very important one again um, before you test you struck the leads together you will get something around 0, 0,6 0, 0,7 now if it happens that when you test you get something that is more than 0, 0,3 what you're supposed to do is to subtract that 0, 0,3 from whatever reading you got when you had struck your leads together then it's going to give you the proper reading okay so you test all those bonded parts and see if they are all bonded or all connected together that is your first test if you don't know what it is that needs to be connected i said it's metal parts if you want to know exactly what those metal parts are please uh, refer to my previous video on to the next test it is a uh, resistance of earth continuity now this one is you still use your digital multimeter this one is for you to check if everything that is earthed with that okay that is installed in that uh in that house that has been every electrical um you know, i don't know how to refer to it but everything that is kind of everything that has been connected from that distribution box let's put it that way everything that has been connected from that distribution box box has been earthed now you have an earth bar obviously on your distribution box so you test from that earth bar to your earth on the socket outlets for instance your earth on the geyser your earth and everything that is supposed to be earthed around the house that is your resistance of earth continuity conductor you check the conductors now you don't check the metal parts the first one was continuity of bonding was metal parts all the metal parts in the house now the second one is um <laughs> the second now the second one is you check for uh continuity on the conductors it's still the same the reading to expect is anything that is not more than 0, 0,2 uh the same principle that i mentioned of striking the lids together still applies on this test as well on to the next one the next one is the last one the last one for today is ring circuits now we do not have ring circuits but because we don't have ring circuits doesn't mean you should ignore this one altogether especially at the training center they ask you questions because you are supposed to have read uh, your notes about this particular test as well we normally have uh, ring circuits in hospitals because in ring circuits okay this is uh, this is how the symbol that they use for ring circuits is they use ferrules if you have on your distribution box a wire that has a ferrule that means that uh, that connection is ring circuit now why is this also each circuit breaker on a ring circuit each circuit breaker has one wire on each um, circuit breaker not more than that each one must have one wire because in hospitals they use um for instance a socket outlet they use it for life line machines i don't know what they called but uh, imagine um if there's a fault with one circuit breaker but you have put about three wires so three circuit breakers are connected to the two so three circuit outlets are connected to this one circuit breaker and then there's a fault with one circuit breaker so 
the that uh, there's a fault with one socket outlet now uh the whole circuit breaker that has these three socket outlets trips it's going to kill three people so to avoid that they use ring circuits which uh, ring circuits with which means there's going to be one circuit per breaker um this is the end of the video that that was our last um test i will see um on my next video i'm going to make four other tests because remember we want to make our videos short and i want to give you all the information that you need to know about these tests because if i don't if i just give you the test what's the point of even doing that Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. And if you've gotten to this part of the channel, please comment with a heart and like, comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed, like I've already said. And now for me to you, it is goodbye. I will see you on my next video. Take care.